Saturn in Pisces. Saturn will be in tropical Pisces from March 2023, what we last March 2023 to February of 2026. What might we expect during this time? You know, it's always good to do, you know, to, to contemplate or think about the long term transits of planets, even if you're not a very in depth astrology buff, because they have big impacts. And the long term transits of like Jupiter or Saturn or the lunar nodes, um, these also have a big impact on mundane astrology. For those of you who don't know, a lot of what we, you normally hear about is just normal natal astrology, natal chart stuff. But originally, the oldest astrology was mundane astrology, the astrology of the world. Uh, Latin mundane, I think comes from a Latin root like mundus, which means worldly or whatever. So the, the world astrology, the worldly astrology. And so you, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I just want to say something about that because I've been studying this more and thinking about it over the last few years. It's really cool how in ancient times, the... Uh, that was the only form of astrology. The main form was the mundane astrology. And it was like, you can just imagine how astrology evolved. Like the shaman for the tribe would notice, you know, the moon was with Saturn, this full moon, you know, and it might be a tough, like, uh, harvest, tough hunt, you know, or the moon was full with Mars. It was going to be a bad hunt. And that would make a big impact for the whole tribe. But then as civilization developed we had agriculture we didn't need to rely on just that one hunt so it's like that that one factor didn't matter as much and it began to affect each individual differently and so then over time as civilization began we needed individual astrology and it's actually really fascinating because like you actually can't have civilization without astrology because astrology showed us when to plant our seeds when to harvest so like sumeria the Indus Valley Civilization, all these civilizations, the oldest ones are all intertwined with astrology and all have their structures aligned to the solstices and equinoxes, which again is the tropical zodiac, not the sidereal zodiac. But this is the ancient way of, 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 uh, of building a civilization even, is through astrology, um, knowing when the darkness is going to come, right? If you don't know when the darkness is coming and when the days are going to short, when the frost is coming and when you needed to already have harvested your grains, you weren't going to get very far in a civilization. But that slowly evolved into natal chart astrology, which, which, we, which is what we have now. Um, but just like a few words on the mundane factors for the next couple years. Well, Saturn is in a water sign and Saturn deals with more of the difficult things like tragedy, loss. Uh, things breaking down. So there can be a lot more tragedies around water coming up the next few years. There will probably be more dangerous flooding and probably already has since last March. Dangerous flooding, anything involving like ice, you know, because Saturn is the cold planet and water, Pisces is a water sign. So like uh, frozen ice issues, damage due to ice on the roads, damage due to, um, you know, like uh, avalanches, you know, like ice falling apart and creating avalanches, um, you know, like houses by rivers or things falling into the river, you know what I mean? Or things like that. Um, not trying to scare anyone, you know, but this is just stuff that we have to be aware of. Like how I did that video years ago, back in like 2017 on Saturn moving through Capricorn. What to expect there? I predicted major changes with aviation and I predict predicted that UFOs are going to be taken far more seriously and we might even have like disclosure or something with UFOs. And it was actually during that window that the United States government basically acknowledged UFOs. Um, while Saturn was in Capricorn. Um, and then, you know, when Saturn moved into Aquarius, Aquarius made this whole case for Aquarius is about currency and markets. And so it's going to have a big impact on, it's going to basically create the crypto bull market. And it did. And so in Saturn and Pisces, Saturn is not as strong here in Pisces, but he's going to make a lot of changes in the Pisces world. One of the main things is that, yeah, there will be like, uh, weather events related more weather events more dangerous deaths and losses and tough weather events relating to cold water you know what i mean relating to um 
northern regions of the world actually because Pisces rules the north direction and the southeast direction so either of those um, and like I said like flooding or like dams breaking you know what I mean um, damage from hail damage from hurricanes any kind of way that that water can become dangerous or cold or threaten your survival is more likely to happen in the next two years uh, this is why in that video I made like six months ago I was talking about how on my Instagram, I predicted there would be danger around water during the last eclipse because Saturn was in Pisces and Mars was in Cancer and the moon was debilitating Scorpio. And I was living by the Ganga at that time in Rishikesh. And so it was really funny because I was like, I should be careful swimming around the Ganga, you know, and I don't want to make a mistake or like get hurt there or do something foolish. But it ended up being I, I was drinking water like while while doing something on my computer and spilt the water bottle and it and it spilt water on my MacBook and that ended up damaging my MacBook and causing me to have to go back to America and that ended up being how the danger around water happened. So you have to be uh, you have to do your best, but sometimes you just can't avoid things, right? Um. So with this Saturn in Pisces, I wanted to kind of give you guys something to think about only dead fish go with the flow okay so that's a good thing to remember when saturn is in pisces only dead fish go with the flow we all know that saturn is or pisces is the sign of the fishes right and going with the flow and you know pisces is very much a go with the flow kind of sign that can be good if the flow is good if the flow is not good it's not good and this is why pisces is the sign of like the, in Western astrology, they talk about this a lot, where it's the most easily able to absorb other people's negative energy. It's really just the most easily able to absorb energy at all. And so, for the most part, it absorbs, well, mostly life is actually good. Nature is good. Life is good. We live in a realm where what I breathe in is the waste of plants, and what I exhale is the food the plants need, and then the, the waste they give out is once again oxygen, which I need. We live in a beautiful reciprocal world with the two, the two fishes. Everything is intertwining and connected, and heaven and earth are never disconnected. Most Pisces reflect that kind of good-natured attitude. And Pisces is actually just a sign of being like high-minded and a good person and just steadily evolving and growing. Um, and it's actually the sign of heaven enlightenment on a higher level but on a normal sense it's just a sign of being a good person like here in this one book I have it says you know it Pisces indicates a high-minded individual firm in their duty doing good deeds and um, you know like in a phase of completion even and wanting to surrender to something higher so with Pisces, Saturn Pisces, actually a lot of that becomes more tough and becomes more stagnant, becomes more difficult. So Pisces is the sign of like Dharma Nichita or like perpetual Dharma or like constantly doing your Dharma, you know? So with Saturn there, it actually becomes harder to do that. It's like one feels more stagnant in their spiritual path overall. One feels kind of more stagnant with their Dharma, you know? And so that's one of the big things that's kind of affecting a lot of people. And then, you know, different charts will will uh, emphasize that more or less, we could say. But one of the big things, I noticed this right away when I was in India, um, around a lot of spiritual communities and stuff, there was just too many dead fish just going with the flow. You know, like, so... Uh, what do I mean by that? Only dead fish go with the flow. Well, Pisces is like, Pisces is a sign of enlightenment and the spiritual path, but it's also, you know, most people that are in the spiritual path are not really into the spiritual path. They're just doing a trendy thing. It's just trendy now. It's just cool to act like you're spiritual, you know, and post stuff on your Instagram and, you know, you film your little, your little yoga routine and you do it in a fast motion and you're like showing off how spiritual and cool you are. It's like, come on, dude. Like, we just need to let, let a lot of that shit go over the next couple years. It's not real spirituality. It's superficial social media showing off stuff and it needs to go. Um, and the people who are trying to, who are really serious are going to move up with their dharma in this time. And the people who are not and are just looking for validation from the world. Hey, look at me. I'm insecure and I want everyone to know how good I am. Like, 
let me show how good I am. Let me show off this charity I'm doing. You know, all that sort of thing. No, that's going to fall. Those people are not really the ones who Saturn is going to lift up over this next few years. Um, and we just have to, like, Pisces can be the sign of the best aspects of the spiritual path and the worst aspects. So, you know, when I was in India, or specifically when I was in the more touristy modern places like Goa and Rishikesh, it was like so many people just trying to market stuff to all these broken Westerners who were coming to America to try to avoid their broken life in the West that they were running from. And rather than even heal and become students, they all just wanted to become teachers, you know what I mean? And teach something. And they had maybe studied it for like two to three months, <laughs> you know? It was like, oh my God. And even worse, there were all these like, uh, what you call the spiritual narcissist, you know, these people who were like, oh, I did DMT and some psychedelics and I had like a crazy trip and I am mistaking that for spiritual experience, which it's not. I'm sorry, but psychedelics can give you wonderful experiences, of course. I've done psychedelics myself and I've had wonderful experiences from them. But, and you can have spiritual experiences, I'm not saying you can't. But for the most part, why do all the enlightened masters not really advocate that? It's because psychedelics take you further into maya, further into illusion, rather than taking you out of it. So those visions you have are pulling you deeper into maya, rather than pulling you out of maya. And then even if you do have an amazing vision, you come back and then you, you probably didn't act on it much, did you? Just be honest. Most people don't. Most of the people that were trying to preach DMT and all this stuff to me and get me to do their crazy workshop, um, if I looked at their life, like they didn't exemplify anything of any developed level of consciousness. They were just people who experienced a crazy drug experience and want to get back to that ecstasy and are not finding ways to do it soberly and without substances. So you're going to see a lot of substance abuse, basically, like pretending to be in the spiritual path, but really escaping and really doing a lot of substance abuse or other forms of abuse could be even like sex addiction, like, ooh, do my tantric workshops and, you know, like when you really need to just <laughs> settle down, <laughs> you know what I mean? And learn to turn your penis off <laughs> and learn to just or commit to one person and marry. Sorry for being vulgar and blunt here, but we're talking about Saturn. Saturn has a bit of a simple, no-nonsense approach. So if I'm going to talk about Saturn, I'm going to actually invoke that attitude. Um, but yeah, like just, I guess in a nutshell, Saturn in Pisces is a time to become a lot more spiritually mature and to really reflect on yourself. What am I being naive about? What am I being not mature about? Am I being emotionally mature about my spiritual path? Or am I just being an escapist or a spiritual narcissist? It's a lot easier to like to not want to work on our stuff and just try to fix everyone else. And there are people who have that attitude of a uh, fix it type person, you know, like someone who has a strong sixth house, Virgo, Mercury, fix the problem energy. Um, they're great at those same planets make you great at marketing you know what i mean and great at like self-promotion and great at social media and managing and doing all these things but they don't actually make you qualified um to give good advice or to give counsel mercury is also the planet of the hustler the trickster the lo the lawyer the gambler the player so that you don't want to go to a spiritual player for your advice you want to go to a venus or jupiter or k2 person for your spiritual advice which doesn't approach like that same way and those types are usually not as good at marketing because they're more focused on living a good life or learning more and more so you don't find them as easily so yeah only dead fish go with the flow just please don't go with the flow too much you know stick to the dharma of what you already know is right and when you feel tired and stagnant you don't feel like making a lot of you know you don't feel like doing work making youtube videos whatever you have to just kind of do your best to keep going sometimes and carry your cross, you know? That's what Saturn does. A lot of times when Saturn is afflicting us, he just makes us frustrated and patient and wants to give up with that thing. With If we just held in a little bit longer, we would make it. So that's one big aspect of it. 
but it's also like don't just go with the flow either. So that's not that advice is not going to work for everything because that also might you might take that to mean well I should just keep going with the flow. If things aren't great, no, you need to make a change. So that's the other side of it. Saturn is actually the planet of change, but the most long-term changes. He's the Vata planet, the planet that changes the direction of things. Um, so it's actually the planet of the most serious long-term changes. So this is actually the best time to become really serious and mature about your spiritual path, um, your beliefs, what you really believe and what your faith really is in. And there may be experiences that test your faith during these times, you know, because that's textbook thing that Saturn will do. So, so just, yeah, with that said, um, my mundane, my advice for Saturn for everyone going through Pisces the next few years is just, um, yeah, just watch out for like spiritual naiveness, you know, or like spiritual immaturity, you could say. Um, random dudes just trying to get you to take you know, their tantric workshop or their, <laughs> their psychedelic, you know, workshop and are saying you're going to get enlightened or do all this stuff. I mean, if that was the case, wouldn't everybody be enlightened? Because like almost like the 60s, the hippie generation, they all did a lot of psychedelics. And if you talk to all of them now, they're all like super like frustrated old 70, 60, 70 year old people that are like worked up watching the news, angry about whatever's on the news or, or something and like not really enlightened. They're not like enlightened yogis that I met in Rishikesh that were swamis and were like 60 or 70 and you could just see the serenity and the bliss on their face just oozing out from their eyes. It's not like that. It's not the same thing. So it's or like, like the guy Alan Watts said who said, uh, you know, I've lived with monks in Asia and I've lived with guys that sell acid on Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco and I'm telling you, there is a big difference. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not the same thing. So just keep that in mind and do not fall for anyone who's trying to sell you on these delusional spiritual trips. And we had a similar thing back when Saturn was in Sagittarius too. And that was a year that a bunch of fake gurus actually got caught or got arrested or fell from their height because Saturn, Sag is the sign of falls from heights. And um, so yeah, you could go back and read articles or things that I've did on that. Um, but it's fun to watch these transits of Saturn. Okay, so we might see some more of that, you know, we might see like, uh, also just all the good Pisces spiritual people in the world, we have to really start working harder. And we're going to have a it's a time of maturation for us. And, um, you know, that that in that includes not like just being too sluggish and not going with the flow too much and making important decisions. And trust me, that's hard. I'm a Pisces. I, I like to go with the flow too, for the most part. But if it ain't working, it ain't working. For example, I was just teaching meditation locally because since being back from India, I really want to get more involved in my community and have more students um, teaching astrology or meditation too. And yeah, I did that for about two months. I tried to encourage it and, and stuff in my community, but I'm not really good at marketing and stuff. And the person kind of wasn't really doing much of that. So it just wasn't really working and there weren't enough people coming. And so I just decided to stop doing it. And I'll go and I'll hopefully be invited to teach meditation at another place that has more of a demand. But it just wasn't working for me. So I wasn't going to keep going with the flow. Okay, so now you guys have a feel for the flavor and the general themes of Saturn moving through Pisces. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about that. Any thoughts or feedback? Um, let me know. Keep me posted as this time, as this window of time unfolds. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to make a separate video for the forecast for the 12 signs because this video is already running a little long. Um, so yeah. Stay tuned for the second part of this video. And uh, yeah, for any of you guys who are looking to study more, um, check out my astrology school because that's, I, as you may notice, I'm not uploading as many videos over the last year or two on the, my YouTube channel. That's because I have a, an, an online astrology school for really serious students. So if you're a serious student of astrology, like I said, embrace this Saturn and Pisces and um, take a mature approach to your spiritual studies and not just randomly watching random YouTube videos that almost seem to contradict to each other and you're left in this confusing state comparing all this stuff. Comparison is the thief of joy. Better to just dive into one path and dive into it deep. 
Um, so if you know you're interested in learning astrology more, send me an email. We could talk. Um, okay, thanks, you guys.